So today I'm dropping variation three of the Goldberg variations, which is the first canon in this variation set. So here's a quick overview of how canons work to kind of help you navigate things as we go on through the Goldberg variations. Most of us are familiar uh, with the sort of undergraduate version of a canon, which is a round, like row, row, row your boat. pitched in G major because Goldberg variations. So play it as a round, row, row your boat goes as follows. So there's a leading voice, which we'll call the Dukes, and a following voice that comes in at some point that makes harmonic sense, which we call the Comus. So dukes, comus. Canons work basically the same way, except they've gone to grad school, so they have some more tricks up their sleeves. Uh, so a canon is usually a thorough composed melody by the composer, and the composer has then decided where uh, the comus, the following voice, will fit in. So if we look at the first canon in the Goldberg variations, variation number three, we find Bach has composed a melody that goes like this. Right? So he starts it off in one voice, which is the dukes, and then he follows it in the second voice, which is the comus. canons is they can happen over a, a independent bass line, which in this case Bach is using uh, that bass line from the aria, etc. So put together, etc. Now, mentioned before, canons have a lot of tricks they can play. One of those is that Bach uses, uh, particularly in the Goldberg variations, is to vary the interval of where the comus is going to come in. So for instance, in variation three that we were just looking at, he, it's at the unison. So the comus comes in at exactly the same pitch that the Dukes started things off. <laughs> Over the course of the Goldberg variations, he's going to increase the interval of where the comus comes in by whole step each time, eventually working up to a ninth, an octave, and the step. Another trick you can play with canons is to have the comus be an inversion of the dukes. This happens twice in the Goldberg variations, um, in variation 12 and in variation 15, the canon at the fourth and the canon at the fifth. So in the canon at the fourth, he introduces the dukes. And when the comus comes in, it's inversion. So that means wherever the dukes went up, the comus goes down. Wherever the dukes went down, the comus went up. So the answering voice put together. since it's the Goldberg variations, he adds that bass line, and in this case, he really whacks you over the head with it. Etc. The 15th variation, the canon of the fifth, does the same thing. One canonic technique that Bach does not use in uh, the Goldberg variations is that of augmentation or diminution. And that would be a situation where the comus either uh, repeats uh, the melody established by the dukes either in longer note values or in shorter note values. Uh, work from the same period of Bach's output, the uh, canonic variations on vom Himmelhoek, it's five variations uh, for organ, 
is actually much more comprehensive in terms of the canonic techniques available. Uh, the last variation uh, in that collection actually has the following voice in augmentation. So the dukes is in eighth notes, the comus is in quarter notes, that sort of deal. That's a quick crash course in uh, how canons sort of work. Hope it helps you as you navigate through the ensuing uh, variations to come. Uh, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Uh, enjoy.